Welcome to the news with me, Chancellor Mozaban, the headlines. High Court to set a date for ruling in the Thompson Binganjira case this Friday. Blunter Synod of the CCAP challenges faith leaders to actively encourage followers to receive COVID-19 jab. MIT advocates for more skills development on exporters of goods and services. In sports, Ministry of Sports await OBC approval to rehabilitate Kamozo Institute for Sports. We now give you the news in detail. High Court Judge Dorothy D. Gabriel will this Friday expected to set a date, rather, will set a date this Friday on which she will deliver her ruling in the judge's attempted bribery case involving business magnate Thompson Binganjira. Confirming the development to us, Registrar of the High Court and Supreme Court of Appeal, Gladys Gondry, said this follows a visual court session held yesterday between the judge and all stakeholders involved in the case. She said during the meeting, lawyers for Dr. Mpinganjira informed the court that their client was still not fit to appear for the ruling. And Alex Opili has a report. Judge Dorothy de Gabriel initially wanted to deliver her ruling on the 9th of this month, but this was cancelled at the 11th hour after Dr. Thompson and Pinganjira's lawyers informed the court that their client was not going to be physically in court as he was not fit. A virtual meeting with the judge and both sides of the case took place that day, which agreed that another one be held on March 22, which was yesterday, to review the situation. And Registrar of the High Court and Supreme Court of Appeal, Gladys Gondre, has told Zodiac that at that meeting, the lawyers for the business tycoon told the court that he was still unable to appear for the ruling because he was not fit. Binganjira's lead lawyer, Patrice Sinkono, was not available for comment despite several attempts, but he told the National Newspaper that their client is still not feeling all right, but was confident that if the court gave an April date, he would have been fined by then. In the case, Dr. Pinganjira is accused of attempting to bribe the five judges that presided over the historic 2019 presidential election case in a bid to sway them and rule in favor of former President Peter Mutarika and the Malawi Electoral Commission, MEC. Mpinganjira denies the charges. For Zodiac, this is Madali Topiri reporting. Meanwhile, trial of suspended Malawi Regulatory Authority Mayor CEO Dr. Collins Magalasi is expected today as presiding senior resident magistrate Sherin Chiro has been transferred to the Industrial Relations Court. The state was expected to start parading six witnesses today in the case in which he is being accused of funding the former governing Democratic Progressive Party DPP convention. But that has been pulled on hold and waiting for the appointment of another presiding magistrate. Director of Public Prosecutions Dr. Stephen Kayuni says he's ready for the case. Andrew Viano was at the court and filed this report. Suspended Malawi Energy Regulatory Authority Mira Chief Executive Officer Collins McClassy was expected to be back in court Tuesday. Last month, when Dr. McGlass appeared in court, he pleaded not guilty to charges of abuse of office and fraud in the 10.5 million Kwacha Democratic Progressive Party DPP members' accommodation case. And upon reconvening today, the state was expected to parade six witnesses in the case. The case, however, failed to start as the presiding magistrate, Shireen Chirwa, has been transferred to another court. State Prosecutor Dr. Stephen Kayuni says they will wait for the date yet to be communicated. It's a slight setback, but we we'll wait for the court to grant us another presiding judicial officer so that the matters so were ready with the witnesses. The, re the witnesses were outside, they were ready, were ready to start today because we want the matters, these are financial crimes matters and matters that need to be uh, uh, processed in court very quickly for the fact that uh, they thrive on uh, sabotage to economy. Dr. McGlassy is being accused of using 10.5 million Kwachamira funds to pay for the accommodation of DPP officials who went to Blanta for a party meeting in 28. And staying with the courts, the chief resident magistrate's court in Blanta has started trial of a case where Andrew Ngoma is answering five charges bordering on defilement. The 50-year-old former employee of Medical Aid Society of Malawi, Mazim, is suspected to have been 
been defiling his underage niece last year. The accused, however, chose to remain silent during plea. Happen Jalaman was at the court. Andrew Ngoma, through his lawyer, told the court his choice to exercise the right to remain silent during plea taking. Ngoma, a former employee of Medical Aid Society of Malawi, is being accused of five offenses bordering on rape and defilement. Prior to commencement of the trial, defense objected to three of the counts on the charge sheet and asked the court to remove them, arguing they are not in accordance with the law. Chief Resident Magistrate Jenny Kaira, however, sustained one objection and dismissed the rest, ordering the state to bring original documents to support the offense. The magistrate, therefore, gave direction for state to proceed with the trial despite another objection from the defense. That question direction which the trial would take in the event that the accused chose to remain silent during plea. Pirilan Masanjala is one of the state lawyers. The matter came today for plea and trial. We have thus far been able to find one witness, the mother of the victim. Um, we know that at the beginning when the accused was being asked to take plea, he chose to exercise uh, his right to remain silent during the plea proceedings. So we still proceeded because the CPNDC does provide for that eventuality where an accused has decided not to plead under Section 52 of the criminal, 252 of the Criminal Procedure and Evidence Code. So the fact that he did not uh, take plea did not stop the matter from proceeding as the magistrate gave the action that we should still proceed. The 50-year-old Ngoma is suspected to have been defying his underage niece last year when she was 16. Center for Development and Economic Development Initiative, SIDEDI, has issued a 28 days ultimatum to Minister of Lands Kezi Msukwa to mediate in a land wrangle among people of uh, Cholo and Mulanje by giving back all idle land to rightful owners. Sided in collaboration with the concerned landless people in the two districts, cite concerns over delays for the ministry to resolve the land wrangles. Ministry of Lands spokesperson Enoch Chigondi has reiterated government's commitment to resolve the matter. Chumwe Badata reports. We are unable to give you that report. The CCP Blanta Synod has asked religious and traditional leaders to demonstrate leadership in mobilizing their subjects to go for COVID-19 vaccination. The Synod's General Secretary Reverend Bire Gama told journalists after the Synod's COVID-19 launch on Tuesday that committee leaders have to rise up and encourage people to receive the vaccine with faith in order to contain the pandemic. Meanwhile, health authorities in Blanta say out of 7,000 people who have received the vaccine, no one has been found with adverse effects. Christopher Sunday reports. Officials from Blanta Synod of the CCAP have told journalists on Tuesday that the country has been administering various vaccines in the past and that people should not be disturbed by false rumors to shy away from the COVID-19 vaccine. Both the Synodist General Secretary, Reverend Bire Gama, and the Synodist Moderator, Reverend Masao Kombolembole, emphasized on the need for the people to take the vaccine with faith that it will protect them from the pandemic. Gama then called on religious and traditional leaders to demonstrate leadership in mobilizing their subjects to have the AstraZeneca jab. Therefore today, we thought it was very imperative and very important that we must do the launching so that the entire world and the entire nation of Malawi should understand that as CCB Blanta Synod, we have accepted the vaccine. Meanwhile, Director of Health and Social Services for Blantyre, Gift Kawalazila, says out of 7,000 people who have received the vaccine, no one has been found with the adverse effects. But since we have actually expanded the bracket from yesterday, we are also vaccinating people that are 60 years of age and above, people with chronic uh, conditions like HIV and AIDS, uh, diabetes, hypertension, TB and other chronic conditions. Officials have also commended the media for giving out proper information about the vaccine. Reporting for Zodiac from Blantyre, this is Christopher Sande.
We now get back to the story where the Center for Democracy and Economic Development Initiative, SIDEDI, has issued a 28-day ultimatum to Minister of Lands, Kez Msukwa, to mediate in land wrangles among people of Cholo and Mulanje by giving back or idle land to rightful owners. SIDEDI, in collaboration with the concerned landless people in the two districts, cite concerns over delays for the ministry to resolve the land wrangles. Here is Shimwemwe Padata with the details. Concerned landless people in Mulanje and Cholo have for close to seven years now been agitating for the possession of all idle land in the two districts. Thousands of hectares of land there belong to estate owners, but communities in the two districts claim that the land was grabbed from natives by colonial masters. The landless people have in the previous governments tried to regain their land, but to date all their efforts have been put to the drain. Now Center for Democracy and Economic Development Initiatives, CEDED, has written two high offices, the Minister of Lands and the British High Commissioner, including the Malawi Human Rights Commission, seeking their involvement in the Rango. Sylvester Namiwa is CEDED's executive director. The organization is demanding the High Commissioner's office to either petition the land or surrender or the idle land to the locals and instructed MHRC to institute investigations into alleged corrupt land deals in the two districts. The, the issue of the landless people has dragged on because all the leaders we have had in this country, they have smartly paid a blind eye to the, to the plight of the people of Chola and the Mulan. This is why the situation has reached this far. Minister of Lands spokesperson Enok Chingoni told Zodiac government is committed to resolve the land wrangles. And the minister will do all it could do to ensure that uh, these problems are sorted out. And the minister is emphasizing that uh, when handling land issues, we must respect the rule of law. So that's what we are doing right now. In September last year, President Dr. Azala Shawela assured people in the two districts that his administration will resolve the land wrangles when he met lead advocate Vincent Wandale. For Zodiac, this is Chimwemwe Padata. Some youths from the central region say there is need to intensify ways of ensuring easy access to sexual reproductive health information, which has been disrupted by the spread of the coronavirus. This they expressed during a girls' empowerment network conference held in Lilongwe Tuesday. Their representative, Adubei Ngonga, says the pandemic resulted results brought fear resulting into the youths shunning youth activities and thus not empowered in different aspects. More in this report filed by Western Guta. One of the participating youths to the conference at Ruperin Gonga from Chinji laments that the spread of COVID-19 pandemic has created fear among the youths that are now unable to access sexual reproductive health information. She says this development if not checked, may result into a much larger challenge of early pregnancies and marriages among girls and violence among boys. No gathering restrictions has led to most youth groups not meeting, which has also affected their access to information on SRHR, as well as accessing SRHR services in youth-friendly health centers. Faith Piri, executive director of Girls Empowerment Network, organizers of the Sexual Reproductive Health Conference that drew participants from Lilongwe and Mchinji, says Jeanette will continue empowering women and girls, especially in this time of the pandemic, so that the country does not end up with increasing numbers of early marriages and pregnancies by the time the pandemic dies off. COVID uh, has highly impacted uh, young people, especially girls and women, because uh, they lack spaces where they can uh, meet and learn about sexual reproductive health and rights. And this has really uh, uh, caused like havoc. Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Agnes Nkusankoma, was guest of honor, concurred with Ngonga, but pointed out the need for young people to continue participating in youth activities using technological means. They are right, they should be scared, but then they can still gather Life should go on as usual, but then we have to take precautions. COVID-19 restrictions bar all public gathering beyond 50 people. Reporting for Zodiac, I am Western Guta. You're watching the news on Zodiac. We'll be back with more after this.
successful business. It to achieve great things in life, you must do little things every day, like the one, two, three with Colgate. with Colgate and give yourself a future to smell about. In a hidiko, ndikutenga iwe lonjezo, ndikuzitengira iwe lonjezo, kukala nkazi wanga, kukala nkazi wanga, kufigira infa izadi reganise. Hidiko, yafika. Hidiko, hidiko. Dani Sanfuna, Yumba Ya Mwino, Kapena Malo, Opasa Jikoka, Housing Investment and Development Cooperative, Hidiko, Kungo Kala Membala, Muta Kusanga Malo, Kukwanilita, Malo Dwa Nyumba, Kiri Ndi Hidiko Viru Kudilongwe, Malo Amagono, Komwe Mwewanu, Uzefewe, Kiri Nso, Di Malo Maboma Ena, Kala Ndi Umwini Wa Housing Cooperative, Ya Hidiko, Kungo Kala Membala, Ugo Mugusunga Juma, Kumbanga Nyumba, Ndi Kulandi La Pindu, Membala gajisia, banja lage li zafa sudo dabo ya ndalama za umembala. Imba nzambiri, panambala izi. Maloto wa nyumba, asafere mazira. Hidiko, hiripo. Hidiko, oh hidiko. Housing Investment and Development Cooperative. Do you know... Here at Lilonga Water Board, we have in place a 24-hour call center just for you, our customers. Anytime you experience a water problem, don't hesitate to call us on 253 and it's free. Low water pressure, no water situation, billing queries, bill payment, pipe burst, pipe leaks, faults, tips, and illegal connections. Just dial 253 and we will assist you. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. It's reinvented formula with flaxseed oil, boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Welcome back. You're with me, Chancellor Mozobanda. Before we continue the news, let's take another look at the top stories. High Court to say the date for ruling in the Thompson Binganjira case this Friday. Blanta Synod of the CCP challenges faith leaders to actively encourage followers to receive COVID 19 jab. MITC advocates for more skills development on exporters of goods and services. In sports, Minister of Sports awaits OPC approval to habitate Kamuzu Institute for Sports. Moving on with the news, countries on Tuesday observed World Meteorological Day with focus on connecting the ocean, climate and weather within the Earth system. Secretary for Forestry and Natural Resources Nyaniram Tupanyama noted in a statement that regular monitoring of the oceans is critical amid growing impacts of climate change. Meanwhile, Director in the Department of Climate Change and Meteorological Services, Jola Mungkogwe, said this year's activities will, among other things, include enhancing awareness on increasing challenges posed by climate change. Alfred Guta reports. This is the 71th World Meteorological Day since 1950. Secretary for Forestry and Natural Resources, Yanina Tubanyama, has described the day as critical as member countries recognize meteorological agencies' contribution to safety and reduce loss of life and property. Ntubanyama observed in a statement that monitoring of the ocean, weather and climate is critical amid growing impacts of climate change. Director in the Department of Climate Change and Meteorological Services, Jula Mukhogwe, says locally they will focus on enhancing awareness on the challenges posed by climate change. The theme for World Meteorological Organization commemoration is the ocean 
our climate and weather. For Zodiac, this is Alfred Guta reporting. In business news, the Malawi Investment Trade Center says local exporters of goods and services in the country continue to face challenges in competing on the international market due to lack of basics on exporting. This is the Director of Trade and Promotion at MITC, Cindy Kimbobwe, observed this morning at a training to develop competencies on potential emerging exporters so that they can ably compete on the world market. One exporter, Frederick Matris of African Honey and Food Products, admitted there are gaps in the sector leading to losses in businesses. Jacqueline Shema reports. Malawian exporters continue to send goods and services on the international market but lack basic skills to sustain fair competition with other traders. This, according to the Malawi Investment Trade Center, poses a challenge on sustainability of the country's economic growth, hence the need to provide solutions to develop relevant competences in Malawian exporters. MYTC observed during a virtual training Tuesday morning, organized to equip potential and emerging exporters, that there are gaps hindering exporters to compete on global markets. Director of Trade and Promotion at MITC, Cindy Kibombe, cited branding and proper registration as some of the challenges failing local exporters from perpetrating on the international markets with their goods and services. You know, exporting is, is not that very simple. You need to understand it. You need to understand the challenges that are there. They need, and you need to, to be ready for, for the market. A product that does not meet the requirements in the importing country, they can quarantine your product and ship it back to you. And the shipping cost is on you as a supply. So as you can see, there are so many complexities, but these are, can be dealt with by conducting sessions like this. One exporter, Frederick Matres of African Honey and Food Products, admits most exporters lack proper information leading to low profits and from the exports. Most of our uh, SMEs don't have uh, reliable information on the export market. And uh, apart from that, financial capacity. Most of our SMEs don't have financial capacity to export due to limited uh, resources. The half-day training targeted exporters from all sectors of development as MITC believes in diversity when empowering businesses for the country's economic growth. For Zodiac in Nirongwe, this is Jacqueline Shema, Reporting. Let's now move on to sports. The Ministry of Sports says it is waiting for an approval from the Office of the President and Cabinet for the project of rehabilitating Kamuz Institute for Sports to commence. Director of Sports in the Ministry, Jameson Dalama, told us that all the process of identifying a contractor have been completed but admitted that the delay might affect sports activities at the facility. We have this report by Bright Kanyama. The renovation of Kamos Institute for Sports in Lilongwe was earmarked to commence in January this year, but the process is yet to start on the ground. Director of Sports in the Ministry, Jameson Dalama, admitted to the delay, saying they were in the process of doing all paperwork, including identifying a contractor. Ndalama says the project awaits approval from the Department of All Government Constructions in the office of the President for the project to start. Uh, the issue is now with the OTC unit, which looks at the all projects in the country for final approval. We are assured that if we start the project within this month or next month, it will be completed before the competition which is marked to be hosted by this facility. Meanwhile, Southern Region Zone 5 Judo Technical Director Osborne Banda says it is sad that the project is yet to start, adding that this might affect the hosting of the 2022 Region 5 Games. We are worried because it's a long time ago when we, Malawi was taught that it's going to host this big event. During the past, Malawi skipped from hosting this competition because of several reasons. Now, I think this is our opportune time for us to show uh, Region of Five, to show Africa, to show the world that we can be able to host such game of uh, big magnitude. Among others, the construction of a standard swimming pool is also part of the renovation works that are yet to start at the facility. The facility was chosen as the main hosting venue for the 2022 All Africa Region of Five Games in December. For Zodiac, this is Bright Kanyama. And that's it for now. Let's take another look at the headlines before we leave. 
date for ruling in the Thompson Binganjira case this Friday. Blanta Synod of the CCP challenges faith leaders to actively encourage followers to receive COVID-19 jab. MITC advocates for more skills development on exporters of goods and services. In sports, Minister of Sports await OBC approval to habitate Kamuzu Institute for Sports to commence. Visit our website zodiacmalawi.com for more news. If you are in the target groups for the first phase of the COVID-19 vaccine, please go for a job without fail. It could save your life and that of others. My name is Chance Banda. Thanks for watching. Define your surroundings with the color of your choice. Make it warm, creative, friendly,